Hi there guys. Welcome back. My cows are all grumpy for no apparent reason. Good green grass. Lots of tall grass over there. Good fresh water. And they still complain. Ain't that right, big bully bull? Yeah, you're gonna complain to me, aren't you? Yes. Well, you're not complaining now, but you were complaining earlier. So, back to the point of this video. Inspiration can come to you in mysterious ways. So I recently had a situation in my life where I was talking to a fella, and honestly, I had no idea I was going to get this uh, get this inspiration from him, and I'm glad I did. This section here is something that I did last year, and it's a very interesting concept. I put all my hay out in this core, uh, like four tenths of an acre section, roughly, and I planted grass seed towards the springtime when it was still mucky, so the cows would stomp all the grass seed in, and the grass would grow. And as you see here, looks really, really nice. And as we walk over this way where I did not plant grass seed, we get over to here, it looks like crap. This looks like garbage, but that was a test. That was, excuse me, that was a test to see if this would work in the first place. And that was a test to see if it was worth my money. So the results are, yes, it worked and it's probably worth my money. I put some grass seed down here because I wanted to, I know of a guy that's pretty close to me that plants grass seed like this. He'll frost seed, he'll let the cows trample it in, he'll do all kinds of stuff like that. And he gets amazing growth out of his stuff and I can see. Like this recovered amazingly well and this recovered like crap. But the question that I propose is, what should I do with it this year? Should I put round bales back in it? Should I leave it go and make a whole nother section like this? My concern is, is if I, let's just take this section in the background here. If I put all my round bales in that section, turn it into this, am I gonna have two sections that are behind next year? So not only this year was I down one section, next year I could be down two, which then puts me down from, you know, my five acres of pasture down to 4.6 acres, then potentially down to like four acres of pasture with both of these combined out of rotation. Now the big time farmers have no issues with that because they have so many extra acres. You know, if their carrying capacity is 100 head of cattle, all the big time guys are only putting 80, 50 to 80 on there because they want to be prepared for a drought. They want to be building soil armor. They want to be doing that stuff. I can't really do that. I don't even have that many cows out here and I'm already struggling with that. And I can't just get more land. I can't make it poof. So when I was talking to this feller, he told me, why not just put your round bales back out here? He goes, you're still only destroying one section. I said, yeah. He goes, why not just put it back out here? It did some regrowth, right? I said, yeah. You know, and that's what I mean. Your, your inspiration can come from different places. Now, is that regenerative? No. You're not supposed to feed hay in the same spot year after year after year. And I can show you why up here with all this pigweed, if I get up here. <clears throat> what grandpa used to do when he had the farm, he would put round bales right where this cornfield is. And he'd take the four-wheeler, roll them all over. And that's why there's still dead spots up here. So while this pigweed is up here, there was so much manure and compaction this whole 20 foot strip of the farm, 40 foot strip in some sections, is the worst ground that I have, but it's also the best ground that I have, if that makes sense. So he just said, why not do it again? Why not do it two years in a row? That way, you know, at least one year, you kind of have a bumper crop per se, because you're still only down one whole section. Now the year after that, I will do something different because I refuse to just make this a permanent sacrifice. First of all, there's a slope and I'm worried about runoff. So I'm trying to make sure that there's good grass, good soil armor up here. And second of all, I want to spread that manure around my farm because of how well this regrew. Imagine this being the rest of my farm. Imagine this being how the rest of my farm looks still. You know, that section over there is definitely not nearly as nice. But this whole video is about inspiration coming from unconventional sources. The gentleman I was talking to, 
never did anything regeneratively like I'm doing. He did have cows. He did graze cows. And he did some interesting stuff where he would plant things like triticale, triticale, and he would graze his cows on that. You know, he would bale that up if he had to. He told me at one point, uh, it's called poverty grass, but I forget what the scientific name is. He said at one point he was grazing and baling that stuff because he just needed food for the cows and there was fields that were full of it. So something like that, you know, you don't have to follow all of the regenerative grazing practices. You don't have to listen to only regenerative people, you know, when you're deciding stuff like this, when you're doing stuff like this. Does it help if I had a mentor? Sure. Maybe I wouldn't be in this situation if I had a mentor that's already done this, you know, that's already tried putting their bales two years in a row right here and then decided that it was the worst thing they've ever done to their farm and it never recovered. Or decided it was the best thing that they ever did and it recovered beautifully. But I'm just saying, don't burn your bridges. Keep your options alive and uh, especially don't let something as silly as... Uh, bridge burning come in between people. You know, you never know when you need somebody and uh, never know when you need that bridge again. So always remember that folks. And like I say, always be learning. If it wasn't for my constant education, I wouldn't be where I am today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm trying to get mama and baby being cute here. I don't know how it's gonna show up on video. Mama's resting her head on baby and baby doesn't care. Alrighty guys. Pickles says he'll see you on the next one. Ain't that right, Pickles? Bye.